Hello and welcome in everybody that is on Veronica Mars's shit list. Two Life on Mars, the Veronica Mars Rewatch podcast where we go through episode by episode. I'm Brenton. And I'm Emily. And we have a doozy of an episode this week in A Trip to the Dentist. Which was like the deepest pull in the show to use for the title. Oh, I was. It's great. Um, I was it so it um, it hit that part of my brain where it's like yes, <laughs> call back to the title in a really um interesting way. Mm. Which it, it is a deep pull, but it's like that's like what the entire thing like hinges on mm-hmm. for like Veronica at the party. True. A trip to the dentist. True. Yeah. Um. I think of like the gas mask though at the dentist like that's have you ever had that no i haven't either they knock me out if they're gonna do anything cleaning <laughs> just clean my teeth they put me under, under. it was weird when i had to pick you up from a routine cleaning every six months it's just like you know how they do that with dogs when they get their teeth clean that's why it's dangerous to right um get older dogs teeth clean because they knock them out as soon as they don't wake up mm-hmm. well yeah i'm glad you keep waking up <laughs> Um, I didn't realize how crazy anesthesia was for a while growing up um, until uh, our friends, as an anesthesiologist, um, it's like, oh, God, that's what you do? Yeah, they knock you until you're dead, basically, and then they put a breathing tube in to make you breathe. Right, and they have to, um, whatever the the dose they're giving you has to be, like, the right amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bananas. That's why they weigh you that day. Mm-hmm. Because if you're like me and you fluctuate weight, like that could make all the difference. Yeah. To- 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is 100% the difference. Um, but yes, yeah, so what did you think of this week's uh, extremely exposition uh, heavy episode? I. We like. I want one episode <laughs> where Veronica and Logan don't have an issue <laughs> yeah. it's like i just i <laughs> it makes me so mad because uh-huh. i'm just like oh, okay we got through this and then i'm like oh yeah fuck yeah they're just gonna keep i think i think this one makes more sense than last week for they shouldn't have done last week's but i'm okay with this week's in a vacuum but it's tough back to back well, and then going forward into season two, like we're gonna get a lot of this. In season yeah. three, it just gets worse. And mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like we can't. We never get one full episode of them just having a happy <laughs> relationship, and they just want one. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. But don't worry, guys. The movie, it's coming. <laughs> I wouldn't characterize that as normal, but um, probably better. It's better. Um, have the whites. Yeah. Um, but you know, we'll save that for a later date. Mm-hmm. So we start this one in Cuba. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, it, 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 it makes me laugh every time when it brings up. It's like Havana. Havana, <laughs> na na na. Uh, um, um, yep. Before that song, though. Um, and was it? When did that song come out? <laughs> Quite recently, last couple of years. Oh, right. What am I thinking of? <laughs> For some reason, that song always makes me think it's a Rihanna song, but it's not. It's not even close. <laughs> it's just the way my brain's wired. Oh, huh. Hmm. Yeah. Dark in there. Yeah, totally. I'm just saying. It tripped up the wires on the way from uh, that song to... Um, your anti-powerful women pop ballad brain. Who uh, who does that song? Ha. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Um... Is that a bad bunny or something like that? Or is that someone different? Bad bunny? Yeah. Isn't it bad baby or bad? Who's bad bunny? baby? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, if bad baby's open, you're welcome, pop stars. Um. <laughs> um. Do you think they talk in baby talk? <laughs> I'm bad baby. <laughs> this is so problematic because I'm certain that's a person. <laughs> is it? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> the question still stands. Bad Baby is an American rapper. Sit the fuck down, sir. Oh, but it's with the H's, and isn't it the... Is Bad Baby the Cash Me Outside girl? I don't know. Cash Me Outside woman? Maybe. I I, th- I think it is. It depends on which one of these photos is actually her, because these are two different people. All right. Um. Maybe I should... 
look this up also and we can mm-hmm. um but we open in Havana. Yes. And we get a very facial hair heavy Duncan, which is strange to me. Oh, amazing. Because he's supposed to be 16. Havana is sung by Camilla Cabello. Oh, okay. Which I knew. All right. Actually. I'm going to put that together. Also, um, Bad Baby, she first became known from an episode of Dr. Phil in September 2016, in which she said the phrase, catch me outside. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? Yep. Um, You're welcome. She does not talk in a baby voice. No, but this I was like, opportunity. this is a person. Well, but bad baby, uh, B-A-B-Y, um, is potentially still open. Oh, my God. Um, So Keith finds Duncan, and he's like, Dunky, my boy, do you want to get on the plane? <laughs> so I was a little loopy in this episode because I had to take it out of Allegra. I don't um, understand how a non-drowsy allergy medicine <laughs> made you loopy. It does every time. Um, so I wrote um, in quotes at the top of this, picture this, Havana, 2005. <laughs> Sophia, I didn't know you joined us. Yes. We've been watching a lot of Golden Girls because um, I've always watched a lot of Golden Girls. <laughs> I said that like that's a new thing that I'm doing as if I haven't done it my entire right. life. I've watched Golden Girls rerun since I was born. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure it was never like, I guess it was probably on current ish but i was never watching it current does yeah. that make sense i think it ended in like 95 or 96 so we would have been little mm-hmm. um but i used to love to watch the golden girls mm-hmm. with my grandmother we were bad babies and <laughs> now i watch it all the time mm-hmm. um but you you're really more of a dorothy though not a sophia yeah i'm not a sophia but that's immediately what popped into my head so i wrote it down <laughs> so because i haven't been sleeping at night time lately mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just a new thing i'm trying i know um, I did a BuzzFeed or something quiz on like which um Golden Girl I was. Mm-hmm. I got Sophia. I can see it. I yeah, am definitely Sophia. Sophia. Yeah. We don't really have a um a rose. No. I don't think I have a. There have been rose and islands in my life, but um. What about Blanche Devereaux? Definitely Blanche Devereaux for sure. Uh huh. The male Blanche is an interesting character. Mm hmm. But I don't, um, I was never, I don't think I was, well, because I, I don't think I was ever friends with a, a female Blanche. Like, is it in, like, a close proximity? Mm, or at least where you knew that that was their agenda, was to, that they were free with their sexuality and did what they wanted with their body. Right, right. Or, like, I maybe knew female Blanches, but they were just kind of, like, those kind of people are just doing their own thing at all times, so I never felt like they were a friend. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, acquaintances. I can see that, I guess. Yeah. Definitely Dorothy's. I've got a few Dorothy's. <laughs> you are a Dorothy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've cultivated Dorothy's. <laughs> got a garden of Dorothy's. Uh-huh. You got a lot of Sophia's? Oh, yeah. Definitely. There's another Sophia. I have to think on that. Um. Yeah. We've got a few, I've got a few Sophia's for sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Without naming names. Yeah. I was like, we don't, we don't need to talk about people. Just like right. conceptually, I'm trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um. But anyway, back to the show that we are talking about. Yes. Um, so Dorothy goes to find Rose in Cuba. Is Duncan Rose? No. If anything, he's a Sophia. Like He's got a lot of weirdness going on. He's not really following the rules. He's got a lot of rage. He's got a lot of rage. Yeah, exactly. Like Sophia when they put her in the nursing home. That's true. This is like early season one. Mm-hmm. And Keith, Keith's a Dorothy, though. Keith is a Dorothy? <laughs> For sure. Um, But he's like, did I kill my sister? And Keith's like, all I know is Abel Coons didn't. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, he's 17. Yeah, it was it was pretty easy convincing to get him back. Just like, come on back. And it's like, oh, fine. You found me. Right, I've had my cigars. Tag, I'm it. <laughs> yeah, I've grown out my beard. I will come back. Um, and he's wearing like a Marxist logo on his shirt. Is he? Yeah. Interesting. It's uh, it's, it's the star, the red star. I don't. I just don't remember what his shirt looked like. Oh, it it looks like Che Guevara's hat. <laughs> Got it. Um. Yes. So. <laughs> Look at you and your fashion finds. I know. Who knew when we started this podcast you would start noticing clothing? That's me. Fashion finds on Twitter dot com. <laughs> Twitter dot com. <laughs> He's on the Facebook. Yes. <laughs> it's it's not regular Twitter. It's on the Twitter. Oh, <laughs> dot com. God. Um, but yeah, 
and then they get back and um duncan's mom is like oh i made a deal with your daughter i don't owe you any money Mm -hmm. and it's like you can't make legal deals verbally one without a written contract but two with a 17 year old totally (laughs) where are the laws in this town there are none talk to lamb he's he's not doing his job he's just being snarky full time yeah good god probably probably only 36 hours a week too on the taxpayer's dime Uh uh-huh what a mess. I know. What a mess. They show up every now and then. Um, when Veronica has a, um, needs them. <laughs> when she calls them. Everybody, otherwise crimes are abund- abundant. Yes. Um, and then Duncan's mom is like, Duncan, next time you run away, take your meds. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, mom. <laughs> yeah. You paid good money to, also only $50,000 to get that son back. Yeah, I know. Like, they're millionaires. Uh-huh. They made this town. Even the secretary is a millionaire. Uh-huh. So what does that make them? Multi-millionaires. And they can't spend more than uh, 50 k to they get their- They spent 50 k to get their son back. Mm-hmm. She wasn't looking for him. She's just like, take your goddamn meds, Cal- uh, not Calvin. Why did I think Calvin? Calvin um, and Hobbes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> take your meds. He took a dark twist on a great childhood classic. I know. It's... Take your meds, Calvin. <laughs> I don't like that. I love Calvin and Hobbes, Me too. too. Wait, I know. You brought the books into the house. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, But yeah. And then Duncan just looks grumpy in the car drinking a water bottle. Is he supposed mm-hmm. to be hungover? Or is it just like... No, I think he's just like uncomfortable because he's back. Yeah. Um... Which, yeah, I, you know, that sucks. And then we cut to high school. Yep, and a really edgelord surfboard from Dick Casablancas that's all black and has a skull on fire. What is that board? It's, like, small. Yeah, um, they'd call that a shortboard. Is that, it's not like, the, you remember the ones, I said this as if they don't exist anymore. <laughs> you know the ones that, like, that you do at the edge of the water that you, like... Skimboard. Mm, yeah. No, it's not like that. No, that was probably like a six foot board, so it's like small. Oh. So you could like go out. So short boards are for like speed. Mm. Like long boards, you like ride, and then like short boards are also for like doing like more, I guess, dynamic things on the wave where you're like turning up and down. Where like a long board, it's harder to do that because you've got all this weight on like a ten foot board. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I go out there and tread the gnar. <laughs> Yeah, I know you do. See there, you skimboard. I uh, skimboards. Uh, once I finally figured out how to like ride a skimboard, was very fun. They're very fun, but the also, ones on the edge of the water. Yeah, I did one once and I smacked my face into it. Right, it's very easy. I oh god, yeah, I hurt myself. I remember doing it, trying to do it on a boogie board once too, which you can do if, but it's like really spotty and like just completely face planting. Boogie boarding is fun. I've done that. I like yeah. boogie boarding. Because mm-hmm. you just you just sit there and you wait until the wave takes you and then you ride your board in. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I used to do that with my friend Aaron's family. Right. And then if you're like serious about it, you put on some fins and you go out. We had wetsuits um, and went out kind of far because we were in Santa Cruz and it was cold. But the wetsuits made it fine. And then I just got to sit on the board and go out and then I'd take it back out. Yeah, it's pretty fun. But you no, know, anything else now. The, the hard wood board thing on the edge of the water smacked my face. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, skimboards are tough. And then you see people like just like easily like glide on them, and you're like, oh, this must not be that bad. And then like it's hard to stop. So like especially like when you first do it, you fling the board. I that's when I fell. Mm-hmm. Was getting because they were like, oh, it's really easy, and I got on, and then I was like, we don't have oh, an god, exit. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh yeah. god! <laughs> like this is going great, but what happens when I stop? Right. Um, and especially if you just hit some like dry spot in the sand, then. Well, I think there was a child. You know, like I had to stop. Like, oh. didn't want to hit anybody. Lady, get your child out of the way. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna need you to move your children. Yeah, I can't get them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, yeah. I thought it was a skimboard, so I was wrong. Oh, gotcha. Now, I yeah, was like, are surfboard. those that expensive? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's probably like close to probably like fifty to a hundred bucks for a skimboard. Yeah, but point. they're rich. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's they could, a, yeah. That's why I was very confused. This whole no, time. yeah. I mean, the reason he's bragging about it is because it's a short board, and it's obviously custom because it's all black, and it's got the stupid um, skull on it, which is very, like, yeah, high school. Like, we're edgy. We're going to put a skull on things and put it on fire. 
I hope a shark eats it. Well, I mean, it gets run over. I know, but <laughs> we hadn't gotten there yet. I so see. Like, I hope a shark eats it. <laughs> um, and then Logan sees Veronica walk by, and he's like, I gotta go catch her. She's mm-hmm. not talking to me, and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. And Weevil intervenes, because she's like, Logan, go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I... I love security guard Weevil. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite version of Weevil. When he's like, you fucked with my girl. Mm -hmm. She's my homie. Right. I will eat you. (laughs) And I will get additional pleasure from you, from busting you personally, Logan. Yes. (laughs) And then um, when um, he, yeah, he really reams Logan with a lot of, lily related content right um what is uh logan said he's like like why are you messing with me man or something like that and mm-hmm. he's just like it was listed under my day planner under goals <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah make some illusion about like logan hitting lily and like that like maybe he killed her yeah totally yeah there's a lot going on there and then he's like yeah he's it hurt your feelings that lily liked me or that lily was coming to me for sex and then you know <laughs> Right. I'm like, oh, let's pull out our dicks and see whose is bigger. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, but then I, the teacher breaks it up before anyone right. takes down their pants. I mean, like, I understand the dick measuring contest that Weevil is getting into, but also, like, that is a great way to get under Logan's skin. Yes. Like, that is the perfectly phrased sentiment right there of just like, huh. It hits him right where he's weak. Oh, yeah. Um, and. Weevil's like Veronica's my girl. Leave her the fuck alone. Like yeah. not like I date her, but like uh-uh. she's my she's my girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got her. Um, and so then Logan shows up at her door. Yeah. Um. At, knock knock. Yeah. Knock knock. Oh, who is it? It's Logan. She's like, please go away. Yeah. Dreamy knock. broody man. And this scene is everything that was wrong with my high school experience <laughs> because in television in movies. They present these teenage boys having the emotional intelligence to be like, oh, God, I must have done something. Not why is she a bitch to me? But, oh, God, I must have done something. I need to go to her house and privately talk to her to figure this out. Mm -hmm. No. no, uh, I will let you know that (laughs) nobody did that to me in my high school career. Teenage boys are much more of the depiction of Beaver late in the episode when Veronica's passed out in the bed and he goes like, you good? <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> it's much more of like, well, like, she's upset, but like, I'm sure she's probably fine. Or like, you're so afraid of her. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. That it's like, you then there. that's the rationalization of like, it'll, it'll blow over, right? Um. And yes, it just it, and like it made me think that boys were going to apologize. Fun fact, they don't. Hmm. Only men apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they tell you at their bar mitzvah. <laughs> you become a man now, so you're sorry. <laughs> I thought they only did that in Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> that, tr- that too. Uh, <laughs> Humble yourself before God, Breton, and don't you feel a little guilty? <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Those things that are natural to you, you better feel guilty about <laughs> right. them. Um, but yeah, teenage boys are actually chickens, and that's where this rant was going. Yes, mm-hmm. agreed. Um, I uh, was one, and um, confirm. But the television written by men mm-hmm. fed me this lie. Yeah, it fed it to me. It made me think. Even Seventh Heaven, the boys and all of them, they were going to show up. They were going to apologize. Right. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Please don't show up at my house. <laughs> <laughs> hey heard the app <laughs> thought i'd drive a few hours i know it's been a couple decades right. but <laughs> don't remember what the argument is about but i'm sorry man when we held hands under that tree i knew it was too much you were too right. much for me and i just had to cut it off when we carved our initials i never carved my initials on a tree i didn't either <laughs> I'm too much of a rule follower. I'm like, I can't hurt the tree. Right. Actually, I did. It was a heart, and it said B plus, and I just left the uh, <laughs> the other side open. Just like but your, can't... your grade one <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just a B plus looking for an A. Did you seriously carve a B plus? 
necklace into a tree. No. <laughs> I was like. I was joking because there's like the yeah, hearts where yeah, it'd be like yeah. B plus E. Mm-hmm. <laughs> B and E. <laughs> <laughs> Why had we never That's thought of that before? That's a different one. I know. <laughs> Carved that into the house I was about to break into. <laughs> B and E were here. <laughs> yeah. Heart. <laughs> Later, suckers. Um, but okay, so, so boys suck. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the summary. Yeah. Um, and they're gonna do better. Mm-hmm. They're all gonna do better. We're gonna raise ours to do better when mm-hmm. we have them. We're already raising our corgi to be better. Right. And he already apologizes in his own way. Does he? <laughs> yes, he comes up to you and goes like, uh, I'll, "I'll cuddle up." <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I barked at you. Would you? Would you pet my ears? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid that if I bark again, you'll misunderstand that it wasn't a. I'm sorry. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes. Yeah, so she's like, "Hey, Logan. Um, that night at Madison's. No, at what's her name's party? Mad- is uh, it Madison? Uh, no, no, no. It was um, Madison. Sally. The- <laughs> something, right? <laughs> I thought Struthers. Um, or the way the Miller plays. <laughs> Watch a lot of All in the Family in this house, too. If you know, you know. Okay. Uh, the party was called. Not called. There's a name for the party. Um, it's um, something with an S because then later they talk about how. They're gonna try to get Veronica drunk enough to make out with the girl whose party it was. Yeah, they, yeah. It doesn't say in this freaking synopsis her name. It's and fine. That is, uh, oh, actually, I might have written it down. Keep going though. I'll um, look. she's like, yeah. Um, the guy that I tied to, or that was tied to a pole by Weevil last week. Um, he <laughs> <laughs> he told me, you know, Tad. God, don't get me started. Oh uh, yeah. He told me that you gave him the drugs, and he's like, we had some liquid X. Mm. And mm-hmm. I'm like, is that a thing? I have no idea. I've... They th- no, they thought they were getting liquid X. But okay, but is that a thing? God knows. Like, did they had a... the internet? Couldn't you Google is liquid X a thing? Like at in the early 2000s, and been like, <laughs> oh no, it's not. Fuck. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Must be something else. Right. That they were Stupid like, boys. Yeah, it's li- but maybe you can. I mean, I guess all solids can become liquids at the right temperature. Yeah. So they, um... <laughs> Thank you for coming to yeah. my science class. It was Shelly something. Shelly. Shelly. Shelly's party. Yeah. Um, he's and he's like, well, I, yeah, like I mean, like we had drugs, but like we were like I, you know, we didn't drug anybody. And she's like, well, I was drugged and I was raped. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna find out who did it. And even if it's you, they're gonna pay. Mm-hmm. And Logan's like, Fuck. a long time ago. Yep. Yeah. Opening scenes. Is mm-hmm. that it? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Weedman. Is at the airport because actually we jumped around because it was after mm-hmm. the opening that we get because I I should have checked my notes ahead of time because I have Weedman with an exclamation mark. Um, <laughs> did you only take one Allegra or did you take four? <laughs> God, what, really, did they, you have the Liquid X? <laughs> I did. I had. I got it from a friend. I, Madison gave me her drink. It was really nice of her. It's like we're in quarantine. <laughs> Where'd you get it? No, I know a guy. Um, went down to TJ. Trader and, Joe's? Yeah, uh-huh. I know a guy. Oh, God, I gave up my contact. He's a checker there. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's not. Definitely not on G. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. So then um, Veronica goes and talks to Meg because she's like, this is the only person that I can really ask that's in this circle. And Meg's like, mm, you, you don't want to know about the party. Like, it's fine. We all have our drunk days. Like, it's fine. Like, She's like, know. I wanted to go get you, but the guy I was with basically told me no. And then right. someone, someone took you away. Uh-huh. And we see uh, Veronica just in an awful position of people doing body shots off her passed out. Um, And what bothered me the most about that scene was when you saw a man walk away with her, regardless of who it was. Meg, you are our only moral compass. You go get that girl. You yeah. take her home. Mm-hmm. I don't care if the boy you're with says, I don't want Veronica Mars to throw up in my car. You mm-hmm. know what? I don't want Veronica Mars to show up dead tomorrow. So she's totally. getting in the car with us, you motherfucker. Yeah, Meg's Meg's not a... 
She's mm. unfortunately a really good person who's a little bit of a doormat in the show. Yes. Which makes me mad because they could have written her as a very strong character to uh-huh. be friends with Veronica. Totally. But she's ag- aggressively pleasant. Yuck. Um, yeah, our strong character, Mac, is only there when we need hacking. <laughs> well, yeah, she wasn't at the party. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yes, yes, we talked to Meg. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so she's like, yeah, you were really, you know. Drunk or whatever. Yeah. She's like, whatever. Up. Like, we all have our drunk nights. Like, just, like at least that's all it was. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, God. Right. So then Veronica goes to, I had to, so this is where I'll have to really look at the synopsis to pick up all these guest stars and minor characters because we start hitting a lot of them. Um, Luke, who was um, last seen in, uh, what was it? The You Think You Know Somebody, when, um, what's his name, went missing. Um Iceman, but not Iceman. Oh, Ice Man. oh, Troy. oh, Troy. Yeah. Troy boy. Um, she's like, hey, you guys went to Tijuana around this time. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, you got any GHB or something? He's like, no, I don't have any on me. Why? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, because I bring that to school. Uh-huh. Um, and he's like, yeah, we did get it. But, like, I gave them away. And then it shows all the guest stars and the boys hanging out, taking shots. And he's like... And Dick is like, oh, give me some of that. And he's just like, ah, fine, I'll give it to you. And hands it over to Dick. What's interesting about that scene, like this whole episode, is that they showed flashbacks from different narrator's perspectives Uh of the party. Yeah. So you got to see the same scene from like three different people's perspective or like things in the background were different in different perspectives. So you really got to identify if there were any things that were similar in all three, like, or in a couple of them, and you're like, okay, like, who's a reliable narrator? Mm-hmm. You were the detective. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I really like that. I'm glad you brought that up. I brought out my Blue's Clues notebook. I brought out my crayon, and we drew oh, yeah. the pictures. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. you did a great job. Thank you. Um, I didn't really know who was who in the pictures. No one does. Okay. <laughs> the stick figures are really gender <laughs> ambiguous. I figured out the blonde hair was Dick, but, you know. Oh, that was Veronica. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed a little off. Well, we probably shouldn't refer to my notes then going forward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Dick is the worst person to give drugs to. Yeah. He's just the worst person in general, like, full stop. But, like, also, um, he's the worst person to give drugs to. What's funny is like the actor who plays him is like still friends with um, um, <laughs> Kristen Bell, and mm-hmm. they like hang out with their kids together. So they'll be like, like they did recently did like a Lazy Boy couch ad or something together. Oh, amazing! And it was just hilarious looking, and I'm like, oh yeah, I forget that he's not like really a bad person. No, he's just really good at playing one. Like, and just like that total like guy that you like, oh, like I want to trust him, but he's a fucking asshole. Uh huh. Yeah, every move is gonna be like. He has no filters and no way to, like, stop himself from being an asshole at all times. Yeah. Yeah. He's the worst. He is. He is uh, literally the worst. He's that guy in college that you just, like, didn't want to fucking talk to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, like, oh, yeah, I also remember seeing Madison riding slut on your car. Yeah. Because horror was too many letters. Yeah, so then she con- confronts Madison in the bathroom and she mm-hmm. feeds her that line. Now Brunette. Yes. Um, and Madison is or was Dick's girlfriend. Is not anymore. Yes, I believe so. Um, Let's hope. Well, they deserve each other, but also no one deserves to be with Dick. Mm-hmm. But um, she's like, well, like, of course I wrote it on your car. Like, you made out with my boyfriend. You made out with everyone. Mm-hmm. You made out with the garage door. Yeah. And I'm like, it's a really weird thing for someone on mm-hmm. a drug that makes you tired to do. Yeah, totally. It's like, oh, yeah, she was totally cognizant during all of this. Which is why I think they tried to feed the Liquid X narrative, because then it gives you, like, the idea that maybe she was blacked out but active. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, jumping around. Yeah. Making out with people. That's, Yep. Mm-hmm. Keezy, keezy. Yeah, but then we get from Madison's point of view, she attacked Dick to make out with him. Uh huh. And then Dick was like, "Oh." Mm-hmm. Um. And then she, when Dick was saw that Madison saw, supposedly passed her off to Casey, 
and uh, made out with Casey. Aaron Samuels from Mean Girls. Yes, thank you. Sorry, Aaron. Apologies. Every time it comes on the screen, I'm like, what's his name in this show? Yeah, I had to write it down. Um, and I just looked in um, on the Wikipedia. <laughs> I have it in my back pocket for all these people. So then um, after this, Ronica goes home, right? We kind of bounce back and forth. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes home and dad is talking to Mrs. Fresnel and she's like, your daughter bugged. Like she had my son carrying a plant with a bug. Mm-hmm. And he's like, she has her reasons. Yeah. Hey, Keith, defender. And he's Love like, it. well, you shouldn't treat your daughter like a 40-year-old. And then Veronica comes in and tries to apologize. And her dad yells at her to go to her room. And Mrs. Fresnel is kind of like looking at her. And she, he, she's like, well, Clarence bugged me first. Right. Uh -huh. and Mrs. Fresnel is like, what do you mean he bugged you first? <laughs> right. And that's when I'm like, how did she not figure out that this man who cornered her alone in an office to intimidate <laughs> is her bad guy. is the bad guy? Yeah. He threatened her job without an HR person in the room. Mm hmm And then told her she couldn't date her boyfriend. Right. Because a 17-year-old put a bug in a plant and had her son deliver it. Before yeah. she was even dating Keith. No, she's, uh, I, I feel like, especially when we get the um, apologetic... Uh, Miss Fennell at the end of the, toward the end of the episode of like yeah I really messed things up I'm sorry Veronica mm -hmm. like and we kind of have gotten the idea that she is never comfortable with Veronica because she had kind of bought she had kind of got the f in previous episodes she'd kind of gotten the feeling of like how everybody else hates the Marses family because especially because she works at Kane Software and is new to the town. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that eventually softens with Keith when she meets him. But I feel like that same thing doesn't happen to Veronica. Like she still feels weird about her. and About probably... her son being associated with her. Exactly, yeah, and what that means for her son. So like she's not thinking rationally. And then at the end, so it is nice at the end of the episode where she's like, yeah, I'm worried I messed it up. Yeah. She's just, uh, yeah, she's not thinking rationally. But then Keith comes in and he's like, maybe your life would be a little easier if I wasn't your dad. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, dad, I wouldn't have survived this last year. And he's like, right. you wouldn't have had to. And then he kisses her on the forehead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that if she would go work somewhere else instead of being his, not his, and being his, I guess, partner, well, <laughs> pretty also much. Just in general, that like the things that happened to them happened because of who he is and because right. she is. Mm -hmm. But also, like it would have happened to her anyway because Veronica's Veronica. Yeah. Hello, I am a trouble magnet. Mm -hmm. Chaos comes to me. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, Often asking for favors. Exactly. So let me go to school. And. Um, Veronica's like, hey, Aaron Samuels, I mean, mm -hmm. Casey. Yes. Um, Still brainwashed? Yeah, like, how you doing? Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, no, like, I'm not I'm not giving my money away to Colts, but, like, I do miss my grandma, and, like, I seem like <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've kind of found a middle ground. Uh -huh. Um, and, um, he's like, yeah, I saw, I saw some shit at that party. <laughs> yeah. He's like, maybe it's better if you don't know, and she's like, no, tell me what you know. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, um... You know, you fell over and then landed on us, and then then no, they, they well, kept like, feeding you shots. Yeah, like so. Instead of her falling onto Dick, Dick grabs her and like falls onto the couch with her uh -huh. to like kiss her, and then like tries to like move her over to Casey, and he's like, uh, -uh nothing. He's like, you. I like my women when they can stand on their own two feet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I'm like, good job. I I mean, like low bar. Right, exactly. Low bar. The world's the lowest bar. Yeah. Oh look, you walked over it. But then he doesn't do anything. Yeah. About when the boys continue to feed her shots because they thought she was sobering up and they thought it would be more fun to get her drunker to see if she would make out with the host. Yep. Uh huh. And I'm like, where was the bystander intervention? training right nowhere and um my uh i wrote it down later i'm like my high school's not this this into date rape publicly yeah that's true at least not a party we all know and love a rapist and that's true or an assaulter mm -hmm. uh but yeah he's like oh, oh yeah and shelly He's like, oh, we want her to make out with Shelly. Um, yep. and he's like, yeah, you know, like I, I saw it, but it's like you didn't stop them. 
Yeah. Right. It's just like, oh, boy. Hands oh, off. no. This is bad. Yeah. No. You put that girl in a car or in a room. High school boys suck. Alone. I feel like the boys at my high school were better than this. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I didn't know a lot of them. Uh-huh. Right. But the ones I knew, I don't know. Yeah, well, I I wonder. Um, I feel like your group of friends in high school would have been like, oh, no, like, we better make sure she doesn't die. Yeah, oh, that's weird. <laughs> like, I hope she's okay. Right. Should we put her on the couch and get her a blanket and a throw-up bucket? Yeah, like, that would have been you guys. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's true. You got a bunch of mama bears in the group. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. And it's just funny because it's like, it's hard for me to even think about that because that would never happen. Like Some the, girl got drugged at a party you were at? Yeah. And she fell on you? Uh-huh. Or because, one, we were going to, um, well, actually, maybe in a different year other than, like, my senior year, it could have happened. Because I, I didn't know, I knew people less at the places I was going to. I wasn't really going to, like, parties anyway. Um, but then, like, senior year, when it was, like, parties, it was, like, very insular. And it was all kids that were, like all really serious about school and like really just nice people <laughs> so mm-hmm. like there was like nothing like that and then i don't i never really went to like big big parties where it was like different schools and stuff like that and people i didn't know gotcha so i don't know if it was ever happened to anything i was at kind of thing yeah i think in my town the town was so small that if something like this did happen mm. <laughs> And someone ever found out, like, that it wasn't that she got too drunk, that it was that someone drugged her, someone would get shot. Oh, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> you got a, not a, a lot of really angry uncles with rifles. <laughs> right. Everyone's got a hunting license. Uh-huh. Yeah. They shoot doves, and then they take them, and they taxidermy them at home. Yeah, totally. Like, I don't think anyone would survive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You have to be a little more sneaky with sexual assault in the valley. <laughs> got to, you know, like mm-hmm. gaslight people. You can't just right. drug them. Uh-huh. Go through this whole rigmarole that's happening here. Mm-hmm. And that apparently nobody talks about later. Yeah. It's weird. Yep. It's very weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, so Aaron Samuels is like, yeah, I saw shit and I didn't do anything. I'm a bad person. <laughs> um, she's like, thanks for your info. Yeah. Really uh-huh. cool. And so then we get a scene with Veronica and Wallace at the lockers. Yeah. And Veronica's cleaning her locker. She's cleaning everything. And that's a really good, important thing to note, is that she is taking everything apart and cleaning it. Yep. Yeah, she that's is. how she's exerting control. Yes, she is deep cleaning everything. Getting all of the gross stuff out. Oh, yeah. Looking for any sort of clue, I think, too. It's a little bit of all of it. Oh, yeah, 100%. If anything, like, pops out. Uh-huh. Um, And as she's cleaning her locker... She's like, you know, Wallace, like, I'm sorry. And he's like, you know, like, I don't like you don't tell me it's fine, whatever. Like, I don't care. And I'm like, oh, we hurt right. Wally's feelings. Mm-hmm. He just wants to be in on the secret. Yeah. And he wants to he doesn't want to be um, cut out from Veronica. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really what he wants to be. He's like, I want you to talk to me because you're my friend. Yeah. And that's all I want. And then um, he also brings up he's like, why am I helping out Logan? Why is he using one of the passes? Mm-hmm. And it like. It makes me because we go from the uh, the viewpoint of Veronica, who's like someone in the school, even if she's like persona non grata, like everybody hates her, uh-huh. um, to like someone like Wallace, um, who is maybe more of just like an everyday person that goes to the school. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, Logan would not even deign to know who these random people were. What? Wallace is like a starter on the football or the basketball, the basketball team. team. I guess he's a little bit higher, but like if he's, it makes, it makes me remember like that Logan is that person that it's like, if you aren't in my circle, like who the fuck are you? Like, I just don't know you. Uh huh. And it's like, Oh, right. This is why, like, of course, like beginning of the season vibes when he's a lot worse of a person that it's like, Oh yeah, this is like that person that I, that like clicks in my brain of like, Oh, that's why I don't like you. Like, mm-hmm. you're that person that is just, that would be like, who the fuck are you? You're nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Veronica kind of feeds him some half-truths and some lies to yeah. um, fulfill Wallace's needs. Mm-hmm. But he, but he even knows. He's like, 
great. Thank you for not telling me the whole truth. Yeah. <laughs> Later. Just sad. Yeah. Um, but also I get why she has to be so guarded because she's doing some very particular work. Absolutely. Um, like it, it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but we'll we uncover that more later. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's just tough. I understand for Wallace. Yeah, I feel bad for him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's his best friend, potential stepsister. And then we talk to Sean. Sean. I was like, I don't remember his name. Yeah. Who I he reminds me of like an annoying person in like a show like Glee. Does that make sense? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you're like preppy annoying. Uh huh. One hundred percent. Like intentionally preppy annoying. Yes. Well, this is the guy that's covering for not being rich. Yes. He reminds me of Chuck, who's Chuck Bass is like the rich kid and one of the rich guys in Gossip Girls. Okay. Um, but like I personally like I remember seeing this trope on shows like this a lot. Uh huh. I never knew a person like this. Mm. No. I've never known a sly person. In that particular, like, mannerisms where it's like, oh, like, I just, like, I'm confident, but I'm, like, over-characterized, for lack of a better word. Uh-huh. Like, it's, it's very much like a stage character. <laughs> yeah. Which uh-huh. I'm like, oh, like, cause, you know, like, I'm okay with bringing a little bit of a, you know, a different something-something to the the art form of television. But, like, don't totally. pretend like this is a high schooler. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. Um, or it wouldn't be, like, this guy. It'd be, like, someone that's more in theater or something. Yeah, because it's just so pompous. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, but like not even like entitled pompous. Mm-hmm. It's completely. I mean, I guess he's playing that character really well. Where it's like that. It's hot air. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's all. He's fake. all bluster. Yep. Um, and he's like, "What do you want? Like, right. I'm, I'm a cool dude. I don't give a fuck." <laughs> yeah. He just is very. Verbatim. God, I hate him. Um, and he's like, "Well, like." Dick wanted Beaver to sleep with you, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was saying. I mean, like we took TLDR. You, <laughs> right, we took you to the bed, and then like Dick was pressuring Beaver to sleep with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, once again, bystander intervention training. God, they're just the worst. Yeah, who people should have? Well, no, they hadn't brought her to the bed, but still, like, oof, oof. don't let them near anybody. Yeah. Don't let them near women. <laughs> Lock her in a room with a nice trash can and a toilet and some uh-huh. water. And yeah. Let her puke it all. Oh, she doesn't really yeah. throw up, though, because she's like... Right. Um, I mean, I've been at parties where people have done that, and you like accidentally like wander somewhere, and you're like, uh-oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I definitely have been to parties where people are like, we're just going to put you in a room. They didn't lock the door. So then it's like, oh, oh sorry, you're like completely passed out. I'm just going to close the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you just need a little nappy nap. Uh, yep, uh huh. <laughs> One time during a party at your house, I went to go take a nap just because I didn't want to talk to people anymore mm. and pretended like I was, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And so <laughs> just tired. <laughs> Well, it was one of your housemates would play music until four in the morning, and I was tired. Man, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't happen for four years. You slept through it. Uh-huh. I watched you sleep. I plotted. <laughs> no, but um, so you know, yeah, like let people sleep alone when they're drunk. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my that's my <laughs> speech. Damn straight. Um, and um, then she goes to truck with Beaver, right? Is there anything in between? Yes. Um. Oh, so she goes and talks to Dick. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like you lied right and he's he's like yeah you know I, like still telling beaver but like sean's more in the flashback of this one it's like sean's more like pushing it with him also uh-huh. pushing beaver to do it and it's like yeah beaver was into it and i think this is when he she runs over the surfboard right yes i think so uh-huh <laughs> because he like i said he just can't not be an asshole so he can't not say everything awful awfully to her so then of course she's like yeah i'm gonna run over the surfboard yeah because she's got she's backed up against it and she's like if Mm -hmm. you don't answer me honestly i'm gonna break it yeah and so he fucking lies Uh uh-huh and we know he's lying because we have casey and (laughs) sean telling a similar story right Uh (laughs) uh-huh and so um 
He's not smart. No, he's not smart, and he's a jerk. Yeah, he's a huge jerk. So, so yeah. she runs over his surfboard. Yeah, thank God. So she should have ran him over, too. Right. Too bad the surfboard doesn't hit him. <sighs> it just makes me mad. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> the absolute worst. Then and he, Yeah, because he like, calls her a bitch. And then it's like, Vram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You call me a bitch, and I run over your favorite toys, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- I would know that it wouldn't be the Switch because you're also using it. No, but I would like delete your profile or change the password or something. Yeah, smart. Figure something out. Mm-hmm. Just change the locks. <laughs> On the Switch. Just the house. Get a lo- oh, I see. <laughs> that is my favorite thing. <laughs> the house. <laughs> <laughs> The place I live. Brenton lives on the patio now. <laughs> <laughs> I love these walls. Um, but yes. Um, then do we go to Beaver? Yes. And she's like, Beaver, what happened? And he's like, <laughs> nothing happened. Like, Dick brought me to you and you to me or whatever. But like, and Dick was trying to get me to do it. But I just wanted him to leave me alone. And yeah. then like, he left. And then I, I was w- supposed to get laid. But like, that girl left with Logan. Yeah. And she's like, oh, poor you. Yeah. The plight of the angry nerdy kid. Uh huh. Um, and um, she's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, but I didn't like, you know. I just like basically in the flashback after they all leave, he's like, Veronica, are you okay? Yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you good? <laughs> no, she's unconscious. You idiot. Yeah. If you're supposed to be nerdy, then maybe you should check for a <laughs> fucking pulse. <laughs> <laughs> good God. Blink twi- Was that a blink? I think it was a blink. You're cool. You're you're good. I'm going to I'm going to head outside and throw up. And he throws up on um uh Leighton Meester's shoes. Uh, yes. What's her name? Uh Carrie Bishop. Carrie Bishop's shoes. Yeah. Um and um yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me <laughs> Yeah. Just the worst. It's like why did he go throw up? Right. And she's like, "Thank you for being conflicted." Yeah. Yeah, it's just probably cuz he like was feeling sick from drinking. Yeah. Well, later we find out it's a whole different story because they changed the whole plot in season two. Uh, More no to come. To, yeah, no need to jump ahead. Just like, you know, it's a, it's a weird series of events regardless. Uh-huh. Um, and then, do we get the Logan and dad scene? <laughs> yeah. Logan <laughs> comes home to Papa cooking and he's making crab cakes. Yeah. Hey, son, you want some crab cakes? What's it like, do you think, to have, like, that kind of dad where it's just, like, larger than life, but also, like, was absent all of the time and then was, like... Awful. Yeah, like, I just, I don't... He's also abusive. Yeah. Like, there's so many layers to the gaslighting in this family. Oh, my God, yeah. Doesn't it matter that I'm trying? It's like, you don't even know your son's birthday, you asshole. Like, the layers to this onion of Eccles' drama and trauma yeah. uh-huh. is so fucking deep. It really is. Um, But yes, and he's like, well, Dad, I'm allergic to fucking shellfish, so I will <laughs> not be eating these. He's like, you must have had me confused with Trina. She's allergic to work. Yes. Great. Which is my Great. favorite. Uh-huh. You ha- we have to drag Trina every chance we get. <laughs> yeah. That's the sibling rivalry. Uh-huh. Hey, uh-huh. Very true to life. But I was like, me too, Logan. I'm allergic to shellfish. We can go on a date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is going to be rough when you pull into harbor after taking the boat out. Yeah, what were they going to eat on the boat? I don't know. Well, I guess regular fish. But then you can't have a shrimp cocktail? Yeah, uh-uh. I can't. Right. I or maybe maybe shrimp. it's going to be selfless. And he's like, Veronica, here, have this shrimp cocktail. I can't eat it. I'm gonna, I'm I just wouldn't want you to enjoy it. I'm just going to take a Benadryl and <laughs> watch. <laughs> if I get puffy. Um... <laughs> And so then Veronica goes to talk to Carrie Bishop. Yes. At the ca- cafe she works at. Uh-huh. Yeah. Carrie Bishop has a job? Yeah. I'm like, okay, Carrie. Uh-huh. Of course she does. Doesn't surprise me. Carrie Bishop has it all. She's mm-hmm. late Meester. Right, exactly. But also that she's like the type, when we find out that she has, you know, a, a good soul and good that she's like driven, mm-hmm. it's like, she that's she's probably also not like the super, super rich as everybody else. I like to think of myself as a Carrie Bishop. Yeah. I worked. Mm hmm. Someone threw up on my shoes. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere, I, I d- sometime. I don't doubt it. 
Um, I don't think I have, so that's good. Just, you know, in the Largo bathroom. The Largo bathroom? Hmm? Yeah, when we went to go see how did this get made? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You threw up by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said I was saying I don't think I threw up on your shoes. No, it was my birthday. Uh huh. Yeah. So I just threw up all over your good time. I watched a comedy show by myself. Ninety five percent of the way there, just like hold it in, Breton, hold it in. Uh, we're, we're wrapping up any minute now. Yeah. I don't even know why you threw up. Uh, the with the last wine that we had just mixed Acidity? with everything awfully yeah so uh-huh. mm-hmm. your acid reflux man <laughs> yeah uh-huh. my old man's stomach grandpa mm-hmm. um but anyway call it pep pep <laughs> carrie bishop is like yeah i was at the party um uh, <laughs> <laughs> i too was there mm-hmm. um i walked by and saw you in a room with someone but, I mean, it was Duncan. Yeah. He had his shirt off and he was on top of you. Yeah, and it's like, and God I, damn it, Duncan, close the door. And she's like, and the door was open, so I told you guys to close the door next time. Mm-hmm. And I was like... She's the one that would admit that. Like, that makes sense. Like, you yeah. walk by and it's like, oh, God, they're back together. Like, shut the damn door at least. Yeah, like, good God. Mm-hmm. And so then Veronica's like, Duncan. And so she goes to confront Dunkykins. Yes. Are we we not sure that like they didn't pick up an evil Duncan from like a different universe when they went to Cuba? He, he does came have back a with the beard. facial hair. <laughs> yeah, the facial hair. I'm like, what seventeen year old grows a full fucking beard? <laughs> yes, the twenty six year old. I mean, seventeen Duncan. Right. I'm like, good God. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, I do. There, um, uh, I I make fun, but my friends. There were multiple friends that were like, we're gonna do the No Shave November, and had full beards after like a week, and I'm like. <laughs> the fuck do they put in your water over there i could you know one of those friends that has he had a full beard like at that time even then uh-huh totally um uh wags connor like a lot of my friends like had really thick facial hair and it's like god as damn it babies yes at like 17 what? they had like handlebars that they could grow you guys gotta be putting some extra testosterone in the water or something <laughs> yep, that's what we're doing <laughs> I just like all the guys I went to high school with, I feel like couldn't grow facial hair. If they did, it looked like. Would have fit right in. Exactly how you think a 17 year old's facial hair would look. I was like, this is going to be cool. And it's like, hmm, the mustache really isn't filling in. There's nothing in the middle that looks creepy. And there's only really dangly facial, like dangly hairs on the bottom of my chin. That's a little gross. Uh huh. So, yeah. Uh huh. That's uh-huh. what I remember. No, and then I had to sit in cars with friends that are like, yeah, like, you know, I think I'm going to shave the beard soon. And they're like, no, don't shave the beard. I don't really like facial hair, so. I mean, I like it on certain people. I think it looks good Mm -hmm. on a lot of people. I don't want you with facial hair. Right. Thank you. It's not happening. (laughs) I like your eyebrows and your head hair. Thank you. Keep the rest of it clean. Mm, Yep, even the legs. (laughs) Not the hair, his part of my body. Especially the legs. That's how they identified me (laughs) on the lacrosse field. There's my son. He's the one with the hairy legs. (laughs) I'm beginning to worry that your family might have given you a complex about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, well, yeah, it's more funny than anything. I do. I, I find that a hilarious story to like, that's how people would identify. It's like, oh, where is I th- saw him running out there. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. I will say what Darkest I Darkest legs on the field. That's our son. What I was most surprised oh, about. Oh, he missed the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that couldn't be him. <laughs> no, it was him. Huh? Um, when I I saw your legs and then I saw your chest and I'm sure they all happened <laughs> around the same time because we uh-huh. met in Vegas at a pool. Right. Um, I mean, we met before that, but you, we talked at the pool uh-huh. and you have like no chest hair. No. But then like a forest yeah. on your legs. I You could count on two hands how many che- how much chest hair I have and then you can. <laughs> two hands. I think that's generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four. Four hairs. <laughs> there we got 500,000. We'll include a photo of Brenton's chest hairs yeah. on our oh. social posts. The follicles. <laughs> All four of them. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why is there a nipple as the episode artwork? <laughs> and just the ones in the middle. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, there you go. Um, 
Anyway, I think I stand a better chance of getting a full mustache. Yeah, 100%. Portuguese, I got this. Mm-hmm. That's why I never went into news. Um, But anyway, Veronica's like, Duncan, you... Raped, raped me. me at this party. Well, she, she, they build differently. Uh-huh. Um, he's like, oh, now I'm a rapist. Yeah, he's like, first I was a murderer, now I'm a rapist, and it's like potentially, like right. these are both alleged, so like let's look into them. But yeah, it's looking, uh-huh. it's not looking good on either front, my dude. Uh uh-uh. uh Um, and to run away to Cuba. He's like, well, I was really drunk at that party, blah blah blah, and she's like, I was drugged. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you're drunk doesn't equal my drugged right because at that time this is how we see the narrative Mm -hmm. um and he's like but don't act like what do you mean you don't remember so then you find out that duncan did remember and he's like i thought we just like weren't talking about it right because we had this like agreement uh uh-huh like because you knew that i knew that you were my sister i know like jesus christ i mean we've talked about it multiple times of just like just bring it up just talk about it. Why don't they send in their blood work to see if they're siblings? Right. Let's collaborate. Yeah. Let's squash this. Yeah. I mean, probably like none of the like romantic interest will be there anymore, and then it's a win-win. Yeah. And then either way, it's like, whatever. Well, we right. either know and we can be siblings, or we know and we can be friends. Right, and get therapy. Yeah. <laughs> either way, uh-huh. therapy is a crucial step they missed this entire show. <laughs> 100%. Nobody goes to therapy until the very last season. Right. And even the, the counselor that they talk to in this episode, or not in this episode, the season, it's like. It's okay. a high school town's counselor. It's uh-huh. not a therapist. Nope. Mm-mm. For mental health, please seek a licensed professional. Yep. Who is certified in assisting people with mental health. Please mm-hmm. do not see a uh, anyone else about that right i mean i go to a high school guidance counselor <laughs> but <laughs> you can talk to other people and if you like talking to a family counselor or whatever by all means do right. it but mental health belongs with a certified professional right. mm-hmm. agreed absolutely i will die on this hill <laughs> yes good <laughs> well, hopefully um, you won't have to not really don't kill me yeah no um but so then yeah, and Celeste comes home and is like, oh, what are you guys talking yeah, you guys, about? You guys yelling and crying in the front yard? It's mm-hmm. almost like you two are Oh, were you talking about your father's infidelity? Mm, how you slept with your sister? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Weird. Take your drugs. <laughs> Take your drugs? Um, And then Veronica's like, oh, since it was Duncan, it wasn't rape? Yeah. Because he was like, they both agreed to it at the time, which I'm not saying she didn't give consent at the time because in his memory, it looks like she did. Right. Uh huh. But then, so also, they had never had sex before, right? Uh huh. That was virginity. Uh huh. So, yeah, there's just a whole another layer to that onion that's not. Yeah. Consensual. Yeah. Yeah. Drunk consent is not consent. Mm hmm. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important to know that. Yes. Um, and passive consent is not consent. You need for a, a very agreement. active yes, not a lack of a no. Mm-hmm. We'll be teaching sex ed. <laughs> <laughs> um, for all you motherfuckers that still think it's okay to rape people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but... Veronica has now made peace with this in her mind that it was Duncan, so it wasn't rape. Right. But is not, but is just hung up on the potential sibling thing. Mm -hmm. And the whole drugs thing. And he's like, I've still got a lot of feelings for you. And I'm like, I don't think she's got feelings for you anymore. You really hurt her. Yeah. You really suck. Um, You're also dating Meg. But also, like, he was who she loved when she was still quote unquote innocent as in before her friend died i don't like using virginity as an innocence marker Mm -hmm. i think the murder of lily is truly the marker of that change because that's Uh when duncan and her basically break it's like all around that same time yeah good point um and so i think that is the piece that it's like once lily is gone that relationship can't happen no uh -uh. because he has now burned that bridge he did not 
talk to her. He did not use her for comfort when the, what happened to Lily happened. Like, they've been through too much apart yeah. to ever be able to be okay together. Uh-huh. Right. That happened to both of them. Yeah. If that absolutely. makes sense. Yeah. And he doesn't realize that at all. Oh, no. He's the worst. Uh-huh. Don't get it. Just harboring secret resentment and pent-up feelings about it because he broke up with her under awful terms. Yeah. Even before, which was before Lily died, and he doesn't, he yeah. still thinks there's a sister, but he's attracted to her, and he is squashing all these feelings. I've into always a, loved you. Yeah. Into a big ball of rage. Yeah. And the poor car just doesn't and see And he thinks coming. he might have raged, blacked out when he killed Lily, and it could yeah. have been because of Veronica. Mm-hmm. And... But he doesn't talk to anybody about it. He just doesn't take his drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, so then. Veronica drives away, and mm-hmm. she parks in front of her dear friend Wallace's house. Yeah, I wrote, everyone needs a Wallace. And she cries sitting in her car, and he's mm-hmm. like, I thought you were stalking me. And he's like, oh, God, come in my house. Like, why <laughs> right. are you crying? Uh-huh. <laughs> Which I think, you know, it's imagine being, I mean, Wallace, as wonderful of a friend as he is, has still never really seen her cry. No, uh, so that was probably like a big shock uh, of like, yes. holy shit, what's oh, going God. on? So then she tells him everything. Yeah. And lays out the, he gives him, lets him borrow her. Her laptop. Let, yes, thank you. So that he can see all the case files on Lily Kane. She's like, this is why I'm doing this. This is like a portal into a, a world where he already kind of is a Watson, but if he was more of a Watson, that it's like, damn, how good would the show be if like tandem? It's like he's more involved with the cases. Mm-hmm. Agreed. But you know. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, but she trusts him. She gives him a sign of trust. Yep. And then she talks to Mrs. Fresnel as she's leaving. Mm-hmm. And she's like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you in trouble at work. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, you know, you had your reasons. I fucked it up with your father. Mm-hmm. And then Veronica's like, I'm sure my father still loves you. And then you get a scene of Keith and Vegas <laughs> calling an escort. Uh-huh. And you're like, what is this? Right. And, it's, and they, they only have that like um tipping balance of like uh oh what's happening for like maybe another five minutes yeah and then you find out that this escort mm-hmm. had been with abel coons yeah that the I, night of the murder you had a standing appointment yeah and so um with i don't i didn't write her name down i didn't either clarissa <laughs> cheyenne i did write it down oh cheyenne yeah um so um yeah, she. We find out about. We find out that Cheyenne was with Abel Coons the night of Lily's murder. Mm-hmm. In the ballroom. Um, and she's like, "Well, I keep moving around because I don't want to get found, and here you are finding me." Uh-huh. Um, and bef- we also get a scene where we get Veronica talking to Logan. Yeah, and is like, "Hey, you did. This is some shit." Yeah, you didn't drug me, but uh-huh. this is what happened. Yeah, and. He feels really bad because mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I just want to protect you. Yeah. And I was shitty to you that night, too, even if I wasn't like, yeah. you know, doing anything. Yeah. I still was not cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, then they continue to make out and they go to Logan's house. Yeah. They make up, make out, go to Logan's house and surprise. Dad threw them a surprise. Logan, a surprise party. Did he not invite Veronica? I know. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. He hadn't invited Veronica. Uh Uh-huh. Even though he was just like, I like you two together. Uh Uh-huh. That's really funny. Um, No, he didn't invite his son's girlfriend. Well, because they were a secret. Oh, right. So maybe he's actually like making a good good dad move. Um. (laughs) But it's like, hey, everybody, um, look at us. Uh, We were about to make out. Um, We were making out. Yeah, you, uh, you hate Veronica, right? Yeah, and you know so her. he's like, if you've got a problem with my girlfriend, mm-hmm. stone face Duncan scene, right? Meg oh, looking sad. <laughs> you've got a problem with me. And then, but when they enter, and the camera pans around, everybody looking shocked. The only one that gets to have a reaction is Beaver, and he's just going, "Wow." <laughs> That's the funniest. Uh, yes. Um, I... and then Dick comes up and does a loud whisper of like this bitch bro yeah and he's like dick get out of my fucking house uh-huh here's the door dickus yeah which fuck dick mm-hmm. especially if you're going by dick 
Your name's Richard, goddammit. <laughs> really? Yeah, I know. Um, That's sad. Um, But yes, yeah, so Logan's like, if you've got a problem with Veronica, you can leave. And Duncan is absolutely quaking in his boots. Mm-hmm. And so then he walks out the door. Yeah. And Logan goes to find him. Yeah, poor Meg. Yeah. And so Veronica goes to grab a drink. Uh-huh. And talk to Madison Sinclair. Yes. Um, and Madison's like being here, nice. Here, here, do you want a drink? Like I, yeah. I grabbed a punch for you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's Atkins or it's carb free, but you know, whatever. Right. Whatever it is at that time. And so she's talking to her and then Meg comes up as Veronica walks away from Madison and she's like, I wouldn't drink in that drink that. She probably gave you a trip to the dentist. It's mm-hmm. her her go-to signature thing. And Veronica's like, what's that? And I'm like, this girl, the first time we watched this, I was like, she's drugging people with uh-huh. like, whatever narcotic they give you at the dentist. Uh-huh. That's literally, I was like, damn, Madison Sinclair dyed her hair dark because she is <laughs> dark. Cold. No. She is a stone cold, <laughs> like, she's out to get people. Uh-huh. Like, there's a lot of GHB at this school. There's a lot of GHB in this series as it continues. <laughs> and... Madison Sinclair is the pinnacle of this. She's the drug king. Right. The, uh-huh. What is it? The um... supplier. <laughs> the drug kingpin. Yes, the kingpin. Yeah. But no, she just spits in cups. Yeah, she just spits in people's drinks. <laughs> but I was like so convinced the first time. Right. I was like, this girl. Like, okay, Damn, they... she's behind everything. Well, like, it's like when they make an evil character a woman and like they're powerful. Like, I was oh. like, oh, we finally got like some sort of <laughs> female like power. You know, it's like an Ursula or a Maleficent. Like, I was right. like, yeah. And then I was like, oh. no, it's more like a flounder. She's just petty. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so she's like, <laughs> which is very funny. That's like a, a very high school thing to do. So then Veronica's like, Madison, did you give me a trip to the dentist at Shelly's party? And she's like, so what if I spit in my drink and gave it to you? Yeah, I didn't drug you. And she was just like, oh, no, she didn't even say that. because She doesn't know it's about the drug. She just right. says like, oh, like, oh, no, you drink my spit. It's not going to kill you. You know, or something like that. Right. Uh huh. And Veronica's like, oh, yeah. And then. You, so you figure out that Dick had actually tried to drug his girlfriend because in the flashback, yep. Dick came over to her with a non-diet Coke mixed drink. Yep. Which if I'm going to drink vodka on my Atkins <laughs> diet, I need diet Coke because if not, you might as well just stack the lard on me is yeah. her quote, which is uh-huh. strange. Cause... D- but Dick's not attentive. Yeah, but also like, um, like you're already drinking vodka. Right. <laughs> Like, ooh. Like, how much alcohol do you have to be drinking to be worried about the mixer's calories? Right, exactly. <laughs> Overcorrecting, to but, say the least. Yeah, it's a, another way to show that women only care about what they look like. Yeah. It's sexist, and it's wrong. It is. Um, you drink the full sugar Coke if you like Coke. I personally don't like Coke. I think it's too sugary. Mm-hmm. Um, but to each their own. Yeah. Drink what you want. Um, put some vodka in there. It's quarantine. We don't care. God damn it. You, you have that vodka. <laughs> just don't spit in your drink and give it to someone else. Especially not when your boyfriend drugs you. Right. Which is what we find out Dick did. Totally. And so then, poor fucking Meg. Uh-huh. So then, we see a scene outside the house where Duncan is hitting a car. Yep. Whose I, car? His car. His car? He tries to get in and he can't get in the car, so he beats it up. His own car? Yes. So I put... Oh, no, Duncan, you didn't kill your sister. Asterix beats up car. Well, and, and makes like... absolutely savages it. This is about Veronica, isn't it? And it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, you poor sweet angelfish. But yeah. yes, you you don't date weird boys. She learned some hard truths this year. Yeah, I mean, we've all dated our Duncans in life. You've, uh-huh. had, you've had a Duncan, I've yeah. had a Duncan. Mm-hmm. At least one, if not more. Yeah, at least a, a flunkin. A flunkin. Um, she's like, yeah. "You're still in love with Veronica." Uh huh. As he just he breaks windows. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. So then, that ends. Whatever chaos ensues from that. Uh huh. And Logan and Veronica go to make out in the pool house, which was their plan initially. Mm-hmm. Um, and Logan's like, "Before we continue making out." Well, first, there's a lot of comments about how short she is, mm-hmm. which as a short girl who in high school would occasionally date 
taller guys. You know what I don't care <laughs> to hear about? How fucking short I am. Uh-huh. One time, I, my freshman year boyfriend mm-hmm. was walking, holding hands with him. And he said, this would be easy. I was standing on the curb. And he's like, it'd be easier if you were always this height. And so I broke up with him with a note. <laughs> Suck it. Handed it to him before class and I walked away. <laughs> this, is my, this is my pass to get out of this relationship. Um, but um, I don't like I don't want to hear how short I am. Right. It's great. Yeah, I could understand I, that I fuck, that would get grading. I fucking get it. I'm <laughs> down. I'm, I'm down here. <laughs> when I I lived with the men's basketball team my freshman year. They were in my dorms. It's not like they <laughs> they weren't in my room. I, lived, I mean they were I in my room, the, but like I lived at the basketball house. No, but the, they lived they were in the room over. Um and they um they would always look at me and they'd be like emily you're so small and it'd be like you're so big like Uh how does it feel (laughs) not good maybe we shouldn't do this and they didn't mean anything by it no they're just like whoa i wonder what that's like Uh, not hitting almost hitting your head on things yeah i made one of them pick me up one time so i could see the top of somebody's head just because i've never been able to look down and see the top of somebody's head that's pretty good that's pretty good (laughs) i had one dying wish (laughs) Please I take will, me up. I will help you rewrite your English essay if and only if you pick me up. <laughs> no, they were great, but I it made me laugh all the time because I'm just like I like mm-hmm. I don't go around telling you you're tall. Why right. don't we go around telling tall people they're tall? Right. I feel like some people actually. I've known a lot of people that we really do actually go around telling them they're tall. Yeah, damn, you're tall. Mm. see and i in the same sense like i'd be like that sucks like i fuck that yeah you're a human i'm a human mm-hmm. we have a good two five feet in between us depends right. uh-huh <laughs> yeah a lot of guys giving other tall guys shit probably because it's like oh this tall guy is a little intimidating yeah and it's it's like how our very small dog likes to bark at big dogs uh-huh yeah he's got to let them know like you can yeah you think you can get me <laughs> Let me tell you, if I didn't have arthritis, I'd be beating you right. up. <laughs> You'd be on the pavement. Dad, carry me up the stairs. <laughs> Same <laughs> that, energy. That's our dog's Same energy. energy. It's very Napoleon-esque. Mm-hmm. Um, but Logan's like, I've got a secret to tell you. Sorry, bud. Um, did you make him mad? No, I wanted to apologize. Well, I mean, we're talking about him, so I wanted to apologize. Oh, to I him, thought he but... barked. No. Um, just wanted to apologize Logan's like I have to let you know that like when Duncan took you away from that chair I drug Duncan <laughs> right I, I wanted him to have fun so I just gave him a little bit like I just wanted to loosen um, up but real quick the quote when he goes to when Duncan is taking Veronica away Logan's like you can't be the Calvary and a martyr which I did love uh-huh. I was like I mean it's a horrible situation to be yelling that but it is a great he has the best lines. Yeah, he does. The- Rob Thomas wanted to be Logan. Yeah. In this essay, I, I will. will. <laughs> the lo- the Eccles issue. Uh, the Eccles the Eccles unified theory. Uh, um, and he's like, I just like I want you to trust me, mm-hmm. so I need to tell you all of this. And she's like, I, like I mean, Duncan might really be bothered that you <laughs> drugged him, but I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> You're kind of ruining the buzz here, guy. And so then Logan was like, I'm going to go get in the liquor cabinet. And he unscrews the vent. And she's like, you got that from Lily. Because Lily used to hide things in vents. And he's like, no, Lily got that from me. And I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm like, no, I think you got it from Lily. And Lily got it from Weevil. because (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, And then he's like, oh, the key doesn't work. So we went inside to grab drinks. And Veronica looks up and notices that there's a camera Mm -hmm. in the ceiling fan. And I'm like, Logan, you never noticed that the cabinets moved? (laughs) Right. Um, They're pretty obvious, too. She tracks the cameras and she sees there's this whole cabinet and, like, literally, like, live footage, like, always recording. Uh Which has also got to be, like, a lot of work. Yeah. Like a lot of, because those are like VHS tapes. You have to think this was 2004. You gotta, yeah, you got to cycle it out. Yeah. Probably. I'd, ass- I'd assume. Uh, yeah. No, because he does. Right. And so um, there, Veronica's like, oh God, he was going to record us. Yeah. Because he brought us here. Yeah. So like, that's gross. Uh-huh. And um, 
so she calls Weevil and she gets the fuck out. And mm-hmm. Weevil drives her away. Yeah. He's like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah. And he hands her yeah. a helmet. Because I'm like, of course Weevil carries yeah, exactly. her helmet. Helmet on. Just for her. Like We're, her size. Yeah. We're not leaving until you put that helmet on. Yeah. Safety first. Um, but I th- I know it's annoying that there's another setback in their relationship. Of course. Right. You were saying at the beginning. But like this one makes more sense as a cause of alarm of someone to be like oh my god what did you just bring me into this creepy room where you like there's a video camera um over the last one where it's like she automatically assumes that he was the one giving ghb out because the unreliable guy who's attached to a pole now is telling her but also why wouldn't she be like hey logan did you know these cameras were here because maybe your parents are into some weird shit yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, if Dad was out there with other people, yeah, she, but like, because yeah. Dad had an affair with everyone, we find that out through Keith early on, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like maybe Dad was fucking some people in the pool house with the cameras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And he's a famous person who likes to look at himself. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. I don't feel like Logan would want to watch himself have sex. Yeah, exactly. Go I mean, boy, I'm a teenage know. boy. She's still freaked the fuck out. Yeah, no, that's I'm terrifying. Here, I'm saying in the in the moment, like yeah, run, I get it. Yeah, but I'd call him later. Be like, hey, yeah, why you got cameras in here? Mm-hmm. This ends before she has time to call because she gets home and <gasps> who's that? Mom, mummy dearest. Mom's back. Fiend. Yes. Well. Whew a lot yeah i know there's a lot that happens in this episode it makes me angry it's a yeah it's cascading down of um wrapping up plot threads and things and just following exposition Mm -hmm. lots of big reveals um yeah but the biggest of all who killed lily kane find out next week i know very exciting um it's kind of crazy that we're almost at the end of season one it is really bananas um but yes, I like this episode for as exhausting as it kind of is. It is absolutely exhausting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot. And it is. It's frustrating. Yeah. And it's that teenage heightened drama <laughs> that you don't get as much of as in this show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like they waited all season to put it in like one episode. Right. The to Duncan really breakdown. layer it on. Yeah. The Duncan crying scene of him just like yell crying. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I see why they hired you for this role. Right. Now. Exactly. I got it. I got it. Uh-huh. For like, a while, okay. I was kind of on the fence about you, Dunky, but. Right. You got big feels. Yeah. Oh, yes. That is uh, his middle the, name. He is big feelings repressed. Yeah. Oh, I wonder what his birth chart looks like. Oh, curious. We'll do some readings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tarot with for Duncan. It's just an astrology birth chart. Okay. Um, it's gonna be really hard to do tarot with a not real person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we write a scene. Um, but yeah, that's mom showing back up annoys me too. Like I'm fucking over her. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you Rhea? Come on. I like Mrs. Fresnel, and I don't care yeah. about mom. You no, uh-uh. spent your college money trying to get mom sober, and that was stupid. Yeah. Because if mom couldn't get herself sober for you, what makes you think that you paying for it is going to change anything? Yeah. It's not. You're still hoping. You, you understand it from Veronica's point of view, but it sucks. Yes. But as someone who grew up around some extended family who are addicts, I like, no, like it is, I don't give you money. I don't enable you. It is right. not my problem that you have these problems. The, but this is her first go around actually dealing with it, it seems like. True. Yeah. So she's not experienced. I guess so. Well, and it is. Her mother has never hurt her until she left right. with her addiction. Uh huh. Because you don't really think about mom's addiction until like the episode Veronica puts her in rehab. Totally. Uh huh. Exactly. Until she's gone completely. And then you're like, oh, mom was hitting the sauce. Mm-hmm. Why do people say hitting the sauce? I don't know. I've never understood it. I always think of like Arby sauce. Ooh, horsey sauce? Horsey sauce. I loved horsey sauce as I'm a sure. kid. I love spice. I know you do. All right. Well, plugs. Plugs. You can find me at But Really Though, T H O, on YouTube. You can find me at But Really Though, B T R L Y T H O, on Instagram. You can find me 
um, at butreallythough.com, spelled with a T-H-O. I do life and career coaching amongst many fun, jovial blogs about whatever the fuck I feel like. Um, I am offering pandemic planning one-on-one sessions for a pay what you can rate so send me an email it's all linked on my website and you can find us on our other podcast but really though it is a conspiracy theory urban legend myth whatever the hell we feel like lying about that week podcast where we present fiction as fact sometimes Mm -hmm. sometimes we present fact as fact Uh and sometimes we present ambiguity as fact exactly and together it creates chaos Mm mm-hmm I think next week I will be presenting fact. I like to think that I'm always presenting fact. Yes, you are. As factual as I get. Exactly. <laughs> um, um, you can find this podcast um, at Mars Rewatch on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pyle Brenton and on YouTube at Burger Discourse. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Stay toasted, Marsh.